80 years ago, this quiet village of Oldbourne in Wiltshire became home to a battalion of US paratroopers as they prepared to take part in the D-Day landings. In the words of one of those men, one day Oldbourne was asleep with her cows and her memories, the next she was tingling with six companies of wild young Yankees given to jumping from aeroplanes in flight. This was the famous Easy Company, also known as the Band of Brothers, and they took up residence in the village, in Nissan huts, in private homes, and even in stables. Our good friend Richard Osgood, the Chief Archaeologist at the Ministry of Defence, has been working at this site since 2019, and this year Time Team is really pleased to join him and his team for the full eight days as we try and unravel and understand how this sleepy Wiltshire village became a training ground for those brave soldiers for D-Day. This is a lovely vehicle, Richard. It's great. <laughs> what do you know about it? It's, it is a Second World War Willis Jeep, so it's, it's a bit of a cut and shut, but it's all wartime. So part of it is 1942, part of it is 1943, and part of it is 1944, but that's pretty much exactly the same as Easy Company. I mean, the great thing about this is that we do have a lot of photographs as well of the particular individuals that were here. Um, there was a nice one there. Um, this is a really good one. This is a chap called Forrest Guth, who's on the, the back of the, the bike. He's a Pennsylvanian and a lot of Easy Company did come from that um, industrial state on the east of America, including Dick Winters, commanding officer. Um, and you can see behind him a couple of these, these Nissan huts, and that's hopefully what we're going to find. We're going to investigate one of those um, soon, so hopefully we'll get some, some good information from that. And you've got an aerial photograph. Yeah, they, we, you can do all the standard archaeological elements with this. This is a, a photograph of, of the huts. You can see them all aligned here. That's the one we're going to look for. And then there's another one on the other side. And this is, this is the sports pitch. Finally, we've got, we've got this one. And that picks up the same configuration. You can see actually what's quite nice is the, the camouflage on some of these old Nissan huts. And actually there's some military trucks in the background. These are the excavations that we did previously and you can see the hut foundations and what we've got are these two now that's what we, we'd like you to find over the next few days a hut used by easy company we think and a hut used by fox company and, and perhaps by other units as well and that's something that we want to ask as a question in this whole uh, excavation of this year so, so that's where one of the trenches is going to be and then there'll be another trench cut out over there and we've also gridded the whole well a lot of the field out for metal detecting and the metal detecting has turned up a lot of finds. If you haven't seen the report, you'll see some of the finds in the museum in a minute. But uh, there are things like dog tags, uh, D-Day clicker. Uh, we've had a parachute pull. Paul's found a lot of these things. Um, so no pressure, pull. Jump wings this year. There was a, a sketch map we've had from one of the veterans of Easy Company. And from his own recollections, he thought that Easy Company were based from the sort of Leylandia hedge right up to where the mini minibus is parked. Kerry and the team have started plotting out and deturfing. Yeah, a bit further on, as long as you keep out the metal detecting grid. We saved this for John after 30 years, he's getting a bit light on top. And John's conducting some geophys in the field next door to see if he can find evidence of the tent bases, more huts, and even the rubbish pits that might give us an interesting insight into life in the camp. So when do you think we'll get some results and some targets? <sighs> We've only just started. I mean, we'll get the whole of this done today, in time to go to the pub. This is the Oldbourne Heritage Centre. It's a beautiful little museum that was opened in 2016 by a local archaeologist, some guy called Phil Harding, apparently. Anyway, here is where they keep all the finds from the last two excavations, and they've got some great stuff on display. Hi, Cassie. Hi. You have an amazing array of artefacts in this cabinet here. Yep. Is this everything from the digs? No, no, there's much more stored away. But this is the, the highlights, the, the really interesting stuff. And what are your favourites out of this cabinet? Um, we've got the D-Day clicker, which would have been used on D-Day to identify um, troops in the darkness. We've got the replica, so you can hear what it sounds like. 
That is quite loud, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is, definitely. Um, dog tags are the very famous famous ones. So the serviceman's ID tag. That one being from a band of brothers, a chap called Carl Fenstermaker, who he'd identified, found his photo online, found his biography online, even before we'd got back to the finds tent with that. Now, if you could add one artefact to this cabinet over the next week, one thing on your wish list, what would it be? Something they've brought back from Normandy, I think. So something German, maybe even French. Every evening, we're going to be bringing you updates of what's been going on in this field and the surrounding landscape. Richard, what can we look forward to? Well, I'm hoping we find out an awful lot about the Man of Easy Company from just the days before D-Day. Uh, we'll have all found the huts, I'm pretty sure, in this field behind us and the elements that go with it. But I'd like to know about how far their influence extended throughout the village of Oldbourne and, and in the landscape beyond us, because they had to train to become soldiers in readiness for D-Day. And those are the little traces I'd like you to find. Mm. Well, we've got lots of members of the team turning up. Corinne is going to be here working on the test pits. Hilda's coming to help in the excavation. Derek and Lawrence are coming and they're going to be going out into the surrounding area with Stuart to try and see if they can work out how that helped to prepare them for the D-Day landings. I'm really looking forward to see how you know my team works with your team because we've got a lot of uh, men and women who've who've done this sort of thing for real as part of their day jobs, the veterans. And for them, Easy Company has a real resonance. So I'm hoping that between us we'll find out an awful lot about Easy Company in the, in the time that we're here. I can't imagine what life must have been like for the young soldiers billeted here as they prepared for D-Day and also the impact they had on the villagers. Remember, it was 1943 when they arrived. The war was well underway. Join us every evening as we try and unravel how that life in this beautiful village could have prepared them for the horrors of war and D-Day. Join Time Team on Patreon to access exclusive 3D models, masterclasses and behind-the-scenes insights.